What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video and today I'm going to be giving you the top five tips that you can use when you're relocating to a new city. All right, so like I said, I'm going to be going over the top five tips that you can use when you're relocating to a new city. And these are going to be based on personal experience as well as a few suggestions that I've come across from other people. So before we jump into it, if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe down below. I do videos just going through my different life experiences, whether that is moving, whether that's documenting my life or whatever it may be. I have tons of topics on the channel. Check it out down in the description below and then subscribe as well with the notification bell. That way you get notified when I post a new video. So we're gonna hop right into this video, guys. Tip number one is to downsize if you can. If you are traveling to a new city and you're gonna be moving by yourself or maybe just with a husband or a wife or a girlfriend or a boyfriend, just one other person, then you can probably downsize. I think as Americans, we carry way too many things and that's what we'll get into in tip number two, but we have all of these things and then we need a large space for these things. So we end up having to pay more for a place to live and we typically have rooms and things that we're not really using except for storage of old things that we probably haven't used in a very long time. So if it's just you by yourself, you probably only need a one bedroom or even a studio apartment. The great thing about downsizing is you're gonna have less room to clean, less space to actually heat up or cool down with an air conditioner and less space to furnish. So to me, I believe that downsizing is just a way to get rid of clutter. It's a way to have a clearer perspective, a clearer mind when you're at home and not have all this stuff that we just tend to pile up and collect. Tip number two is going to be when you are packing to avoid bringing things that you have not used in at least the last six months. That is actually being generous. I think if you haven't used it in like 60 to 90 days, you probably don't need it, especially when it comes to clothing. If you haven't wore it in the last two to three months, chances are you're probably not actually going to wear it. So by getting rid of these type of things that you're not really using, it's gonna help you to make the moving process easier. You're gonna have less things to haul around. You're gonna have less things to pack and ultimately you're gonna make the process a lot easier for you, which we'll also get into this is you don't really want to be bringing furniture unless it's a very high value furniture and if you're not moving very far. But if you're moving cross country, say from Florida to California or California to Texas, like something that's a large move, it's probably not worth bringing your furniture. Number one, it's very, very heavy. So if you're using a moving company, they usually charge you by the weight and some moving companies actually won't even do furniture because of the weight. So ultimately I would go ahead and part with your furniture. I think people tend to get these like weird attachments to their furniture. And if it's something sentimental or it's a very expensive piece of furniture that's actually worth shipping, then maybe it is worth it for you. But most couches and stuff, really you can replace those a lot cheaper than it's gonna cost you to transport that item. So I would avoid shipping any type of furniture. I know when I moved, I did not ship any type of furniture and it made things just that much easier to only have boxes to worry about. And tip number three, if you're following the first two tips of downsizing and getting rid of heavy items would be to sell these items on Facebook Marketplace. You can use Craigslist as well, but I've just found that on Craigslist, it's kind of sketchy. You don't really get the best type of people on there. Facebook Marketplace, I've had a great experience with. I've never actually had any issues dealing with Facebook Marketplace. So go ahead and sell the furniture that you have. As you start packing, like I said, implement that rule of have I used this in the last you know, 60 to 90 days? If not, then you probably should sell it. You should probably part with it. There's certain things that you're not gonna be able to sell, like some clothes, some shoes, some items that just aren't going to sell. Donate those to Goodwill. Give them to somebody who's actually going to use that item rather than you just holding on to it with this hope that, oh, I might use this in the future, I might need this. Because if you haven't used it, like I said, in the last 30, 60, 90 days, or six months at the very max, you're not going to use it and you're just being a pack rat. So if you use things like Facebook Marketplace, it's gonna help you to get rid of the items very quickly. You're gonna have that messenger so you can talk back and forth. And it's an overall very safe, secure way to sell things. I've had a lot of success with it in the past. Tip number four would be, if you do plan on bringing furniture, I would recommend getting a U-Haul if you wanna do things yourself. Personally, me, I like to do things by myself. I don't really want anybody else 
dealing with my items. I want to have my items. I want to know they're with me. I want to know where they are. I want to know that they're being handled correctly. So for me, I prefer to use the U-Haul. Now, again, if you're going cross country, you can pay upwards of like $2,800 for the actual U-Haul and that's before gas. And these things are gas guzzlers. So by the time you add in the gas, the stops, the hotels, you're gonna be well over four grand moving across the country. So just be aware of that. If you are going to move it yourself, it probably is gonna be more expensive, but if you want that peace of mind of having your items with you and you have you know, furniture that you do wanna put in the U-Haul, then you can go about it that way. Option number two would be to use pods. These are containers that basically they ship them to your house and I don't know if you can get this in an apartment. I don't believe you would be able to because it's gonna take up a large space. So I think you would need to have a driveway of some sort where you can actually put the pod in. But basically they drop these off at your house. You have 30 days to fill it up with as much as you need and you tell it where you want it to go. You pay a flat fee, it's basically a shipping container and you get to go ahead and transport those items. So I think it comes out to be about the same price as the U-Haul, but then you don't have the gas price. So you do end up saving a little bit of money, probably about $1,000 or so. Again, this completely depends on how far you're moving, but a pod is a great option to do as well. And they offer insurance on the pods and some of them offer like climate control as well for your actual storage of your items. So if you have things like pictures and photos. You don't want them baking in the sun all day in this hot container. So having that cooled environment is a big plus as well, which is something you're not gonna get with the U-Haul. And the last option that you have would be to use Amtrak Express shipping. This is actually one that not a lot of people know about. I personally did not know about this until a friend told me about it. And basically you have 500 pounds that you can ship each day. There is a size limit on the boxes that you can ship as well. And if you go over 500 pounds, basically you need to do a separate shipment for the next day, or you can ship out those extra items through USPS. You can put them in your car if they fit, whatever it may be, but just know there is a 500 pound maximum per day on the shipments that you can use on the Amtrak Express. All right, and for this next part, guys, I wanna get all of the facts correct to you guys. And since personally, I have not used the Amtrak Express shipping, I just wanted to read off a couple more facts for you. Um, so that you actually have accurate information here. And that is your first 100 pounds is a flat rate of $67. After that, it's 57 cents per pound. The max box size is three by three by three, and each box can only weigh 50 pounds. They will not transport any furniture or oversized items, and you are not technically supposed to pack any electronics or breakables. They don't check your items, they don't go through your items, but for your own safety, as well as the safety of the train, they ask that you do not pack electronics or breakables. So ultimately this service is great if you are looking to move on a budget. If you have boxes that you can get to 50 pounds and ultimately you don't have any furniture, this is a very cheap way. I could see you possibly moving all of your things over cross country for under five, $600 if you do this smart and you do it the right way. So this is a great option for you to use as well. All right, and the last and final tip that I would give you guys is this. This was one of the most exciting parts that I had of moving from Florida to California, and that was to make a road trip out of it if you can. I understand some of you may have time constraints. You need to be there for work. You need to be there for your delivery of your items that are being shipped, whatever it may be. But personally, what I did was I sold all of my things that I had pretty much. I packed up my car. I think I had four medium-sized U-Haul boxes. And then I had four of these small boxes, a suitcase and my iMac box and a couple other miscellaneous things. But what I did was I had all of my stuff with me. I packed up my four-door car and I drove from Florida to California. We made tons of stops along the way of places that I was not going to see really any other time that I had planned. It was like, I'm gonna be doing this trip once, maybe twice if I end up moving back. So at the end of the day, I want to see all the things that I could see. I know sometimes people do this, they drive from Florida to California and they just rush there. They drive overnight, they miss everything. They don't get to stop and see any of these amazing places that they're probably not gonna see. So make a trip out of it. We stopped in New Orleans, we stopped in Houston, San Antonio, New Mexico, and then eventually we got into California. It was a amazing trip with so many amazing things that I got to see along the way. Carlsbad Caverns were amazing in New Mexico. There's just so many things that you can see along the way of doing a road trip. Now, if you're gonna do the road trip, what I would say is, like I said, I had a suitcase in the car, 
pack enough clothes for that week. Make sure you don't pack all of your clothes away in your box. Have a backpack or some sort of bag with all of your items that you're gonna need for the week for shirts, shorts, socks, underwear, toiletries, all of that stuff. And what I did as well was I packed a cooler as well so that I could put food in there to eat so I didn't have to spend money eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner out every single day. I did enjoy myself at some of the restaurants along the way, like in Texas, we had to get barbecue. New Orleans, we had to get the Cajun food there. So there were certain places that we stopped and we did have a meal at, but for the most part, we were eating food that we brought and this really helped to save money. And if you're going to do this route, make sure if you're stopping at hotels, Stay at hotels that have a refrigerator in the room or some sort of refrigeration that you can do. Maybe they offer ice packs. I don't know, something that you can do where you can actually keep your food cold so it doesn't end up going bad after the first day and this way you have food for the entire week. Sometimes one of the hotels that I stayed at was actually the extended stay. I believe they even had a stove in the room so you could cook like eggs fresh, you could cook some meat if you needed to cook up some meat. Um, there was just a lot of options. So extended stay was one that I recommend. And then we also stayed at a Motel 6 that was like a um, like an efficiency. They had a full kitchen in there. I didn't recommend it. It was not the best experience at all, but it had what we needed for the night and then we left early in the morning. So it was not a huge deal. And the final tip for this portion is if you're gonna do the road trip route, plan out some stops along the way. Before we left, we put into the GPS and we wrote down the places that we wanted to stop because if you're just driving and you end up kind of like, oh, should we go here? Should we go there? You could end up doing a lot of backtracking where you go one place and you go backwards and you go back again and you're just like kind of all over the place. So take a couple days out, sit down, turn your phone off, you know, go on your computer and just really immerse yourself in trying to plan out this trip because like I said, you may only do this once in your life, twice if you end up moving back or somewhere else way across the country, but if you move again, who knows, you may not end up back where you came from. So you could do a road trip from Florida to California and then you end up moving to New York. So now you're doing a road trip from California to New York and you're missing out on all of those stops that would have you know, been along the way from Florida. So those are my top five tips if you are looking to relocate to a new city. Some things that I would recommend to save you some money, some things to make the most out of your move. I hope this video helped you. If it did, give it a thumbs up down below. Let me know down in the comments what you learned, what was your favorite part of the video, and I will see you guys in the next one.